All right, you overgrown space puppies. Settle down, Professor Zix. Nax's voice boomed through the classroom. His tentacles waving in what the students had learned was his species equivalent of an exasperated eye roll. Today, we're going to talk about something that'll make your antenna curl or whatever appendages you've got up there. The diverse array of alien students, ranging from bipedal humanoids to floating gas bags, quieted down. Some literally deflated in their seats, while others retracted various limbs in anticipation. We're going to discuss Sykes Snacks paused for dramatic effect, his eye stalk swiveling to take in the entire class humans. A collective gasp rippled through the room, followed by excited chittering, nervous squeaks, and one particularly startled student accidentally ejecting a cloud of spores. Oh, come on, Zixnax grumbled, waving a tentacle through the spore cloud. Kalax, we've talked about this. Save the sporulation for biology class. Kalax, a mushroom-like being, darkened in what might have been embarrassment. Sorry, Professor. It's just... Humans. They're so... So... Terrifying offered blip-blop, a gelatinous blob quivering in its containment field. Fascinating countered Zerar-K, an insectoid creature, mandibles clicking excitedly. Completely bonkers, Zixnax finished, all four of his eye stalks rolling in unison. But that's why we're here, isn't it? To learn about the galaxy's most improbable sapience. He slithered over to the holographic projector and activated it with a tentacle tap. An image of Earth appeared, spinning slowly. Behold, ladies, gentlemen, and variations there upon the human homeworld. Earth, or as it's known in most galactic circles, how in the name of the cosmic egg did life evolve there? The class leaned forward, a mix of awe and horror on their varied faces. Now, can anyone tell me why Earth is classified as a death world? Zixnax asked, his tone suggesting he was about to drop the mother of all pop quizzes. Xerox antennae twitched as she raised a chitinous limb. Because it's constantly trying to kill its inhabitants. Gold star for the walking exoskeleton, Zixnax exclaimed. Earth is a cosmic cocktail of everything that can go wrong. We'll go wrong, let's start with the basics. Gravity? Crushingly high. Atmosphere? A volatile mix of gases that'd be toxic to most species. Weather? Imagine being alternately frozen, boiled, and electrocuted. Sometimes all in the same day. The class collectively shuddered. But wait, there's more zigzags continued. His tentacles wiggling with what might have been excitement. The planet is geologically unstable. The ground literally splits open and spews molten rock. Massive chunks of the crust grind against each other, causing earthquakes. And let's not forget the charming tradition of hurricanes building sized vortexes of wind and water that can reshape coastlines. Blip Blop gurgled nervously. Professor, how do humans survive all that? Zixnax's eye stalks curved into what the class recognized as his version of a smirk. That, my gelatinous friend, is the million credit question. The answer? They're absolutely, positively, unequivocally insane. The hologram shifted to show various human activities, people surfing massive waves, climbing sheer cliff faces, and even jumping out of perfectly good aircraft. You see, class, humans don't just survive their death world. They enjoy it. Where most species would see mortal peril, humans see. Fun. The class watched in horrified fascination as the hologram displayed humans engaging in increasingly dangerous activities. But surely Zerar kittered. They must have some incredible biological adaptations to survive such conditions. Zixnax let out a sound that might have been a laugh, if laughs could sound both amused and terrified. Oh, you sweet summer spore. Humans are practically held together with duct tape and wishful thinking. No exoskeleton, no natural armor, no venom, no claws worth mentioning. They can't even regrow lost limbs. Then how Kalax began. But Zixnax cut him off with a wave of a tentacle. I'm getting to that, you impatient fungus. Humans have one adaptation that's more powerful than any armor or claw. They're stubborn. Cosmically, improbably stubborn. The hologram shifted again, showing humans in various environments, arctic tundras, scorching deserts, dense jungles. See this? Humans have settled in nearly every environment on their planet. Too cold? They'll invent better insulation. Too hot? Air conditioning. Predators. They'll either befriend them or turn them into shoes. The class watched in awe as the hologram cycled through images of human achievements towering skyscrapers, spacecraft, 
advanced technology. But Professor Blitblop bubbled. If their world is so dangerous, how did they have time to develop all this? Zixnax's tentacles wiggled in what might have been a shrug. That's the kicker. Humans don't just survive adversity, they thrive on it. Every challenge is just another Tuesday for them. They see a problem and think, how can I solve this in the most ridiculously complicated way possible? The hologram now showed various human inventions, each more improbable than the last. Take their approach to flight, for instance, Zixnax continued. Most species would look at the sky and think, nope, not for me humans. They strapped themselves to explosives and said, let's go to the moon. A ripple of nervous laughter went through the class, but surely Zara kicked. They must have some weaknesses. Zixnax's eye stalks drooped slightly. Oh, they do. They're fragile, their lifespans are tragically short, and they have an uncanny ability to create problems for themselves. But here's the real kicker they're aware of all this, and they just don't care. The hologram shifted to show humans engaged in various social activities, laughing, dancing, creating art. You see, class, humans have this irritating ability to find joy in almost anything. They know their world could kill them at any moment, so they've decided to live every moment to the fullest. It's simultaneously inspiring and completely terrifying. The class sat in stunned silence, trying to process this information. Now, Zixnax said, his tone shifting to something more serious, I know what you're all thinking. Professor, why are we learning about these crazy death world as well? Hold on to your various appendages. Because I've got news that's going to make today's lesson seem like a relaxing bath in a nutrient pool. The class tensed, some students literally bracing themselves against their desks. Next week we're getting a human exchange student. The reaction was immediate and chaotic. Kalak sporulated again, this time joined by several of his fungal classmates. Blitblop's containment field crackled as the gelatinous student vibrated with excitement or terror, it was hard to tell which. Zarak's mandibles clicked so rapidly it sounded like a small percussion section. Quiet Zixnax boomed, his tentacles flailing. Once the class had settled down, he continued, I know this is. Unexpected. But the Galactic Education Board believes that interspecies exchange is crucial for fostering understanding and cooperation. And let's face it, if we're going to understand any species, it might as well be the craziest one in the galaxy. But Professor, a timid voice piped up from the back of the class. It belonged to Gloop, a shy amoeboid student. Won't it be dangerous? What if the human accidentally steps on one of us? Zixnax's eye stalk swiveled towards Gloop. An excellent question, and one that highlights why this exchange is so important. Humans, despite their reputation, are actually quite careful when they need to be. They've developed something they call empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. It's like emotional telepathy, but messier. The class murmured amongst themselves, trying to wrap their various minds around this concept. Besides, Zixnax continued, the human student has been thoroughly briefed on the diverse nature of our class. They're probably more worried about accidentally offending one of you than you are about being squashed. This seemed to calm some of the students, though others still looked skeptical. Now, I want you all to spend the next week preparing for our new classmate. Research human customs, try to understand their bizarre idioms, and for the love of all that's cosmic. Don't offer them any of your native foods without checking if it's poisonous to them first. We don't need another incident like the great Zeglorvian cheese disaster of 2184. The class nodded solemnly, some of the older students shuddering at the memory. Class dismissed Zixnax said, his tentacles drooping slightly in what might have been relief. And remember, next week, let's try to show this human that we're not just a bunch of squishy, vibrating, multi-limbed weirdos. We're sophisticated, squishy, vibrating, multi-limbed weirdos. As the students filed out, chattering excitedly about the upcoming arrival, Zixnax slumped against his desk, all four eye stalks closing in exhaustion. What have I gotten myself into, he muttered. The next week passed in a blur of preparation and anticipation. The classroom had been modified to accommodate human environmental needs, gravity generators had been adjusted, atmospheric composition tweaked, and a special ergonomic chair installed. When the day finally arrived, the class was a bundle of nervous energy. Some students had gone to extreme lengths in their preparations. Zarak had memorized the entire history of human space exploration. Blitblop had attempted to recreate a human delicacy called a burger with questionable results. 
Kalax and his fumble friends had formed a small choir to perform what they believed was a traditional human greeting song, though their rendition of We Will Rock You left much to be desired. As the door slid open, the class held its collective breath those that had breath to hold anyway. In walked. A completely ordinary-looking human girl. She was of average height for her species, with brown hair pulled back into a ponytail and bright, curious eyes that darted around the room, taking in the menagerie of alien life forms. She wore what appeared to be standard human attire jeans, sneakers, and a T-shirt with an incomprehensible slogan, I'm not arguing, I'm just explaining why I'm right. Class 6, Nax said, his tentacles quivering slightly, meet our new exchange student, Sarah Thompson. Sarah smiled, revealing flat, her bivorous teeth that nonetheless made some of the smaller students flinch. Hi everyone, she said, her voice surprisingly melodious. It's really great to meet you all. I hope we can learn a lot from each other. There was a moment of silence, then Zarak's antennae twitched, and she blurted out, Is it true that humans have walked on their own moon? Sarah's smile widened. Yep, though not recently. These days we're more focused on Mars and beyond. This broke the ice, and suddenly the class erupted in a cacophony of questions. Do you really drink dihydrogen monoxide? Is it true you can regrow your outer layer every seven years? How do you survive without photosynthesis? Why do you cover yourselves in synthetic fibers? Sarah looked a bit overwhelmed, but she laughed a sound that made several students jump. Wow, okay, one at a time. Yes, we drink water. No, we don't completely regrow our skin every seven years, that's a myth. We get energy from eating other organisms, not photosynthesis, and clothes. Therefore protection and, um, modesty. Modesty blip blop burbled curiously. Is that a vital organ? Sarah's cheeks turned slightly pink, a physiological response that fascinated the class. No, it's more of a cultural thing. It's complicated. Speaking of cultural things, Kalax piped up, his spores quivering with excitement. We prepared a traditional human greeting for you. Before anyone could stop them, Kalax and his fungal friends launched into their rendition of We Will Rock You. The result was a discordant mess of clicks, whistles, and sporadic spore explosions that bore only a passing resemblance to the original song. Sarah's eyes widened, and for a moment the class held its breath, worried they had offended their new classmate. Then, to everyone's surprise, she burst out laughing. That was. Amazing, she said between giggles. I've never heard Queen performed quite like that before. You guys rock. The fungal choir beamed as much as fungi can beam, clearly pleased with their performance. All right, all right, Zixnax interjected, his tentacles waving for attention. Let's give Sarah a chance to settle in. We've got a whole semester to bombard her with questions about human peculiarities. As Sarah took her seat, Gloop, the shy Amaboid, oozed closer. Excuse me, Gloop burbled nervously, but aren't you scared, being surrounded by so many aliens? Sarah smiled gently. A little nervous, maybe, but not scared. On Earth we have a saying the only thing we have to fear is fear itself well, that and maybe Australia she chuckled at her own joke, then continued, besides, you all seem pretty amazing. I'm more excited than anything else. Gloop seemed to relax a bit, its cytoplasm swirling more calmly. As the class settled into their first lesson with their new human classmate, it became clear that this exchange was going to be an education for everyone involved. Over the next few weeks, the class learned as much from Sarah as she did from them. They discovered that humans had an incredible capacity for adaptation, able to adjust to the varied environmental needs of their classmates with surprising ease. Sarah, for her part, took everything in stride, from the occasional accidental toxic gas emission to the time Zarake molted in the middle of a physics lesson. One day, during a particularly heated debate about the ethics of terraforming, the classroom's gravity generator malfunctioned. As objects and smaller students began to float, panic started to set in. But Sarah, drawing on her zero-G training, which it turned out, was just hours spent in a trampoline park, calmly helped anchor her classmates and retrieve floating equipment. See, Zick Snack said proudly once the crisis was averted. What did I tell you? Humans don't just survive chaos, they thrive in it. Sarah grinned, her hair floating wildly around her head. Hey, this is nothing. You should see Black Friday sales back on Earth. As the semester progressed, the class's perception of humans began to shift. 
Yes, they were still seen as the crazy death worlders from a planet that seemed designed by a committee of sadistic cosmic entities. But they were also kind, adaptable, and possessed an irrepressible spirit that was downright infectious. Sarah introduced her classmates to human concepts like pizza parties carefully adapted for various dietary needs, movie nights featuring a bizarre human entertainment called reality TV that left most of the class questioning the reality part, and sports. After a disastrous attempt at teaching football, they settled on the much safer charades. In turn, Sarah learned about the rich diversity of galactic cultures. She marveled at Zarak's species hive mind capabilities, got a crash course in bioluminescent communication from Blip Blop, and even participated in a traditional spore spreading ceremony with Kalax and the other fungal students, though she drew the line at ingesting any of the spores. As the end of the semester approached, Zixnax decided to hold a special session to reflect on what they had learned. The class gathered, an eclectic mix of shapes, sizes and states of matter, with Sarah sitting comfortably among them. Well, Class Z Weixnax began, his tentacles swaying gently, we've come to the end of our little xenobiological experiment. I think it's time we discuss what we've learned about humans, and perhaps more importantly, what we've learned about ourselves. The class murmured in agreement, a mix of chirps, bubbles and rustles filling the air. Sarah Zix, Nax turned his eye stalks towards the human. Why don't you start us off? What's been your biggest takeaway from this experience? Sarah stood up, her eyes scanning the room, taking in the diverse array of classmates she'd come to call friends. Honestly, Professor, I think the biggest thing I've learned is that we're not as different as we might seem at first glance. A ripple of surprise went through the class. Blip Blop's gelatinous form wobbled skeptically, but Sarah the Blob burbled, You're from a death world, you can survive conditions that would kill most of us instantly. Sarah chuckled. True, but that's just environmental adaptation. When it comes to the important stuff, curiosity, friendship, the desire to learn and grow, we're all pretty similar. Zarak's antennae twitched in agreement. I must concur. Despite my initial trepidation, I found humans to be fascinating companions though I still don't understand your obsession with that coffee substance. Hey, don't knock it till you've tried it, Sarah grinned. Though maybe not you, Zarak, I'm not sure caffeine and exoskeletons mix well. Kalax's spores pulsed with excitement. I've learned that humans have an incredible capacity for art and expression. Their music, while often chaotic, speaks to something deep within my mycelia. And let's not forget their resilience, Gloop added, surprising everyone with its newfound confidence. Remember when the atmospheric regulators went haywire last month? Sarah just pulled out this thing called a jacket and kept right on working. Sarah blushed slightly. Well, when you grow up on a planet that can't decide if it wants to freeze or boil you, you learn to be prepared. Zixnax's eye stalks curved in what the class had learned was his equivalent of a smile. Indeed, I think we've all been impressed by human adaptability. But Sarah, surely there must have been challenges for you as well. Sarah nodded, her expression turning thoughtful. Oh, definitely. I mean, trying to understand a lecture on quantum mechanics from a gaseous life form was interesting, and I'm still having nightmares about that group project where I had to synchronize my brain waves with a hive mind. The class chuckled, remembering the incident where Sarah had accidentally linked with Zarak's hive mind and spent an entire day speaking in clicks and mandible clacks. But you know what Sarah continued, her voice warm. Every challenge, every misunderstanding, it just made me more determined to bridge the gap between us, and I think that's something humans are good at we see differences not as barriers, but as opportunities to learn and grow. Zixnax nodded approvingly, his tentacles swaying. An admirable perspective, and one I hope you'll all take to heart. Now, class, I have an announcement to make. The students leaned forward those that could lean anyway, sensing something important. Due to the success of this exchange program, the Galactic Education Board has decided to expand it. Next semester, we'll be welcoming students from five other Death World species. The class erupted in a mixture of excitement and nervous energy. Sarah's eyes widened. Five more? Let me guess Cronovians, Sarthalians, Volcrin, Terrilian Swamp Dwellers, and Australians. Zixnax's eye stalk swiveled in surprise. Impressive, Sarah. Though I'm not familiar with Australians, are they a newly discovered species? Sarah burst out laughing. No, no, they're human. Just. A special kind of human. Trust me, Professor, 
If you think I'm adapted to harsh conditions, wait until you meet an Australian. They make the rest of us look like delicate flowers. The class looked both intrigued and terrified at this prospect. Well, Zixnack said, his tentacles wiggling with what might have been excitement, I suppose we'll have plenty to look forward to next semester. But for now, let's focus on celebrating what we've accomplished together. As if on cue, Kalax and his fungal friends began another rendition of We Will Rock You, this time with Sarah leading them. The result was still far from what Queen had intended, but it was enthusiastic, joyful, and uniquely their own. As the bizarre melody filled the classroom, Sarah looked around at her alien classmates, the blob playing air guitar, with its pseudopods, the insectoid tapping out the rhythm with its mandibles, the shy amoeboid pulsing in time with the beat. She felt a wave of affection for this strange, wonderful group. Sure, she came from a world that the galaxy considered a death trap. Yes, her species was seen as crazy for not just surviving but thriving in such conditions. But looking at her classmates, Sarah realized that humans didn't have a monopoly on resilience, adaptability, or the capacity for friendship. As the song reached its climax, with Kalax unleashing a triumphant spore explosion that showered the room in harmless, glittering particles, Sarah thought about how she'd describe this experience to her friends back on Earth. She'd tell them about the challenges, sure the times she'd had to rapidly adapt to alien environments, the cultural misunderstandings, the occasional accidental poisoning note to self not all blue liquids are sports drinks. But more than that, she'd tell them about the friendship she'd forged, the mind she'd melded with sometimes literally, and the perspectives she'd gained. Because in the end, that's what humanity did best. They didn't just survive in harsh conditions, they found ways to thrive, to connect, to turn adversity into opportunity. And if they could do that on their own death world of a planet, why not out here among the stars? As the impromptu concert wound down, Zick Snacks's voice cut through the celebratory atmosphere. All right, you interstellar party animals, settle down. Just because it's the last day doesn't mean we can't squeeze in one more pop quiz. The collective groan that filled the room transcended species, a universal language of student suffering that needed no translation. Sarah couldn't help but smile. Different as they all were, some things truly were universal. And as she pulled out her data pad, ready to tackle whatever bizarre xenobiology questions Six Knacks had cooked up, she knew that whatever challenges the universe threw at them human, alien, or somewhere in between they'd face them together. After all, if a death worlder, a blob, a fungus, and a hive mind could become friends, anything was possible.